I called this PCVR, hurry up and wait, because of the angst that I'm seeing in some VR circles. I'm not even waiting for anything right now, but I thought it might be worth explaining why this is the way things are and will continue to be. As I mentioned in my last video about the state of VR, Meta is the only big gun still making VR headsets, and PC VR isn't even its main focus. But getting to the point of comparison, Meta has regular releases like clockwork. They involve an announcement and an actual, in bold, release date about three months later. What this real release date means is that thousands of headsets will be in stock directly or through other retailers on the actual release date that they announced with. But the PC VR enthusiast market is completely different. And because it is much smaller and has very different realities, let me emphasize, PC VR is a niche enthusiast boutique cottage industry. And we need to get used to this and set our expectations around this fact. Let me also emphasize, very importantly, I am not in any way, shape, or form trying to pick on any of the PC VR headset companies. In fact, I'm very grateful that they're still in this market. I'm just explaining the realities of this market from the consumer side. There are some very big differences. As I mentioned, Meta, short-term product announcements, mass production well in advance, so there's product on the shelves on release day. PC VR, we get pre-announcements, overly optimistic release dates, and production issues and delays. It's a big difference. So why is this? In the small market, we frequently have small companies driven by people with lots of drive, and I appreciate all of you, but they typically have unrealistic expectations and inexperience delivering a product. The trickle down is that PC VR headsets are announced well ahead of their overly optimistic announced release date, and the actual release dates are always way off. They're announced early for many reasons, uh, partially because it's a small market and they want you to think about putting your money aside in anticipation for what they have coming, partly because they're underestimating all the things that are gonna go wrong between when they could hypothetically have been ready to ship and when they can actually ship after Murphy's Law and other realities have had time to sink in. So they'll have you pre-order, get on a list, or pay a tiny sum of money, or pay in full but completely refundable until it ships. And this happens before anything's remotely ready to ship. That's a lesson in psychology. They want you to make a mental commitment to buy their headset, which they know you may keep for a while, so they want to lock you in. Then there's defensive marketing. As a great example, seven months ago in April, Pimax pre-announced the Pimax Super. And I'm gonna say, pre-pre-announced the Super OLED. And they overly optimistically announced the Super QLED would be released in fourth quarter of 2024, which would have been a nine month announcement. Anyone who has any familiarity with Pimax knew there was no way in hell we were gonna see a Super QLED in fourth quarter. Pimax pre-announced a relatively short-term headset that we can expect to see eventually, and they pre-pre-announced a long-term headset to check the micro OLED box. And once again, this is defensive marketing. They just wanted to say, we've got a micro OLED coming eventually, so you might not want to buy another micro OLED today. Another reason for pre-orders is to gauge the demand. A new company selling a high-end product simply doesn't know how many headsets to make. Since this is a small market and the components to build headsets are headsets are always cheaper, in larger numbers, they need an idea of the economies of scale they can get. The cost for a thousand of a part versus 10,000 versus 100,000 can be dramatically different. We saw this with the Somnium VR1. First, they asked people to get on a list, but then they were not ready to commit to a price until many months later. And then after many months of delays past that, they had a soft release with just a few units trickling out. And many wondering how many more months they'll be waiting for their copy. So while the design appeared to be nearly complete a year ago, 
I'm sure the supply side of this is very complex, and the production is also complex. Meanwhile, a month ago, in October, uh, Maganex announced the Superlight 8K would be shipping uh, between February and March of 2025. So far, comments are that it's a little dim, has issues with the headset strap holding it in place, and currently is only, only has a fixed 90 hertz refresh rate. I'm not saying any of those things to dismiss their headset. The important point is they say they are working on addressing those issues. If they're still addressing issues, the design isn't finalized. And if the design isn't finalized, they're still three to four months away from mass production. Once finalized and sample copies are completed, there's FCC testing, among, among other testing, and paperwork to ship worldwide. So they may ship to Japan first and eventually widen that, but it would be extremely unlikely they'll be shipping product in February or March. That's just the way things are. And, and to be fair, even my beloved Big Screen Beyond had production issues. They did actually have it completed on time and got an initial production run of 100 out as scheduled last September. But they had production issues after that that knocked mass production back, and I got mine about two months late. And that still isn't a big deal, but then there were also quality control issues with the third-party prescription lenses, causing people to have to wait months longer than me. And then their audio strap was supposed to ship shortly after the headset, and it didn't ship until much later. Now, once again, I love my big screen beyond, and I'm not saying anything bad about the other headsets I mentioned. I'm simply talking about the realities of the enthusiast VR market. The last thing I want to mention is sort of a gray area. Let me start by saying that my YouTube channel isn't monetized, so I definitely don't feel the stress of someone reaching for eyeballs to make money or even further to earn a living off of YouTube. There are YouTubers out there who make a business around VR headsets. YouTubers wouldn't put out the barrage of videos about pre-announced headsets if there were not eyeballs looking at them. So I'm not blaming them. This is a small market with enthusiasts eating up any information they can get about any new VR headsets. If you don't like something, don't watch. However, this is directed to you as a VR headset consumer. It's important to learn to separate the hypothetical, overly optimistic messages that come from manufacturers in this market. These YouTubers are just repeating what the manufacturers told them. They aren't doing anything wrong. I'm just hoping after watching this video that you as a viewer can adjust your expectations and understand that little hype and unrealistic release dates are just part of the small market we live in. And that's the way it's going to be. So enjoy your VR headsets whenever they eventually get here. Thanks.